For more on this, let's bring in Brett Baer. He is, of course, the host of Special Report, seen nightly, 6 p.m. Eastern on this network. Interesting race and an interesting seat, Brett. It hasn't been a Democratic-held seat since the Carter administration. You've had some Republican luminaries like Johnny Isaacson, who's now the senator from Georgia, and Newt Gingrich holding that seat. Do Democrats actually stand a chance of winning it? It's possible, uh, and it would be a big win just for, as you mentioned, the time frame of how many years it's been since a Democrat held that seat. This is, again, the northern suburbs of uh, Atlanta, and uh, it is a crowd that looks to a moderate type of candidate, whether it be a moderate Democrat or kind of an establishment Republican. But just perspective here. You know, Democrats are pouring a lot of money, effort, celebrities coming into this race. They've made this a race that is going to be some sort of referendum or a signal. Uh, they tried to make Kansas that. It didn't work. Now they're saying Georgia is that. I, I think the expectations game here goes back and forth. If Democrats do get over 50 percent today and John Ossoff wins, that is a big win. But in perspective, it's one House seat. Uh, and if Republicans manage to win this seat back, uh, after all the attention Democrats have given it, that should be noted as well. We noted the president's t tweets that have gone out attacking Ossoff, the Democratic candidate in the race. Eleven Republican candidates, some of whom fully embrace the president, some of, some of whom are sort of lukewarm toward him, and at least one of whom kind of shuns the president altogether. I guess we should not expect to see at this stage the president taking sides on the Republican side of the picture. I don't think so. I think that they're they're expecting probably uh, a runoff in June, and then the Republican Party will get behind one candidate. One of the problems that the Republican Party has had, frankly, in some of these races and also the presidential race, is that they have everybody running. So it splits the vote. They don't unify behind one uh, candidate, and that causes a problem. Nobody on the Republican side is going to be able to get to 50 percent today. It doesn't appear. John Ossoff on the Democratic side may do it, but likely will fall short. He is, uh, as was mentioned earlier, earlier a former um, congressional staffer. What can you tell us about his time on Capitol Hill? Well, he's young. I mean, he's 30 years old, and he is um, he is somebody who has some experience up on Capitol Hill, not a ton, uh, but is a young campaigner who's out and about. He is being portrayed as somebody who can reach across the aisle. However, Republicans are painting him as a tax and spend liberal, and that's why you're seeing uh, President Trump with the tweets he's he's tweeting. I think um, a June runoff is a lot tougher for Democrats in this traditionally Republican seat. Uh, it would send a message uh, either way how this uh, comes down. And the spending has been incredible on the Democratic side. It has. I mean, he's raised $8 million uh, for a House race. That's, you know, significant. Uh, I think there are some outside money that is pouring into that race as well. And you have some big voices cutting commercials um, that are trying to motivate different pockets of the Democratic base. We'll see what the voters of Georgia decide. Uh, want to turn our attention to questions about transparency that still dog President Trump and his administration. His staffers are pushing back against more calls for the president to release his tax returns. And this is all really boiling over as, uh, as the president tries to push for tax reform. Democrats have suggested they are not going to get on board the tax rewrite train as long as the president has not released his taxes. Expect this battle to continue, John. I don't think there's any way that uh, President Trump, from what he's said so far, is going to release those tax returns. Traditionally, presidents have. Um, is there a law that says he has to? No. But uh, there is a real call on Capitol Hill from the Democratic side uh, because they believe it will tell a lot about the companies and what he's tied to. Uh, President Trump is obviously saying there wasn't a big call from voters for this. Um, the media was calling for it, and he won the election. So I don't expect the Trump administration to change their tune on not putting this out. The transparency questions, though, are real, and we're going to have a story about, about that comparing to the Obama administration, some of the questions uh, being raised now. Yeah, but as the administration um, tries to cobbled together some kind of tax reform plan if they can't get significant Democratic support. And so far, indications are they are not, at least, uh, at least based on these tax return questions. Uh, they're going to have to do it, at least get it through the Senate uh, with a minimum, you know, with a bare majority. And, and that doesn't allow for a long-term tax change under Senate rules, right? 
Well, you can do big tax changes uh, under reconciliation. You can fit it under there. That's the vehicle by which you could change the vote to 51 and not 60. Uh, and if that's the case, the question really is hurting the cats on the Republican side to get them on the same page on tax reform. And I think right now, looking at the daunting challenge, the mountain ahead of them uh, to get that done, uh, you heard the Treasury Secretary yesterday say he didn't think it was going to get done before the August recess. All right. Brett Baer, we'll see you tonight on special report.